This video is a continuation of the Utilization Rate Part 1 video, specifically the practice section where we finally get to practice a problem together and see how this relates to our own work. So if you're here and you haven't watched the first portion of this video, I highly recommend you go back and watch the Utilization Rate video Part 1 first, and then come back here for some hands-on experiential learning. Here's the question on everyone's mind for this topic. Would you ever track your utilization rate in a firm? For your own effectiveness, maybe, but most people I've worked with don't track their rates. If you are a principal or a project manager, then you might find it useful in order to understand how billable your team is, which affects the profitability of your team. Or if an employee is not billing as much as their role is expected to bill, it's a good indicator their work needs to be reprioritized. At the firm level, however, knowing the utilization rate is significant, especially if the firm financials are showing a growing percentage of indirect labor that's cutting away from the overall profit of the firm. How is this relevant to you and I? As an experiment for a day, I tracked everything I did from the moment I got to the office to the moment I left. I wanted to get a sense of how I was quote unquote, utilizing my time. Here's how I tracked my time. And you can follow along with me in any software, but I will be using Smartsheet to do my tracking. First, I created a new sheet in Smartsheet. If you are not familiar with Smartsheet, think of it as a cloud-based software that helps you create, organize, and track data, share it across any number of collaborators in a simple, intuitive interface. I like to think of it as Project Excel and my Outlook calendar merged into one. And if you're curious enough, then go ahead and download a 30-day trial version that you can access on smartsheet.com for free and follow along with me. Once you create an account online, you can access your files on any device, anywhere, anytime. Here's how I set up my sheet. When you log into the software on your browser at smartsheet.com, you see the following screen. Mine is populated with files, but yours will be empty. This is a workspace where you can organize documents into folders. Under the Home tab, in the navy vertical ribbon on the left side of the screen, click on the icon that looks like a house. Then, to create a new sheet, click Create on the right side of the screen. A pull-down menu will prompt you to choose from a number of options. Click Sheet, or the first blue icon. Next, name your sheet. Once a sheet is created, it will look similar to a blank Excel or project file. The top ribbon has all your tools to customize your sheet. Most of you will find this interface quite similar to other software, which is why I find it really helpful and intuitive. Right click on the primary column label and from the drop down menu, select rename column. Name it task. Do the same with column two, but name it hours. Next, under the task column, Whenever I stopped my task and shifted to another one, I made a conscientious effort to fill out the task I worked on and the corresponding hours in the following column. By the end of the day, I had a table that looked similar to what is shown below. This was a pretty relaxed day. And for those of you working in an architecture firm, you know that means I had a lot of work, but it was manageable. Some of the items I logged included answering email RFIs to writing contracts and meeting with clients. What I'll ask you to do at this point in the video is to pause and read through my list of tasks. For each task, ask yourself, would this be a billable or a non-billable task? Remember, anything project related, like where I created the agenda for a project structural meeting or discussed a stair design with a client is billable because it's related to an active project. Other tasks like the staff retreat was specifically charged to a general overhead account, so that was non-billable. What about writing contract proposals? Is that billable or non-billable? That would be non-billable because the contract is not yet signed and the project has not yet started. Next, I created a table right below this one where I had all my tasks labeled and this time I created this table to summarize the data. 
Similar to Excel, you can double click any cell and type a formula with an equal sign. Type the formula like sum to add all the direct labor hours in that cell and do the same with indirect labor. Another feature I love about this platform is that I can drag rows easily anywhere as well as quickly generate sublists in one click by indenting the data and then it can collapse easily under previous rows. Finally, I inserted a formula to get the total labor. If you watched part one utilization rate video, filling in these formulas will be very easy. My utilization rate cell formula is the direct labor of 7.33 hours divided by the sum of direct labor and indirect labor of 10 hours. This produces a utilization rate of 73.3%. So there you have it. I was 73.3% billable at work on this particular day. This was probably right around where I should be in my current role. However, it really all depends. Some days I spend more time writing contracts and proposals and other days I'm in Revit all day. This is a very simple example that I've just demonstrated, but you can visualize data even at a dashboard level in Smartsheet. What do I mean? We'll save our work now and click on the home tab again on the left side of the toolbar. On the right side, click Create again. This time, click Dashboard. Go ahead and name your dashboard. Then click on the blue icon labeled Add Widget. This is where you can set up a dashboard to visualize all kinds of data in several formats. Next, click on the chart widget in green as shown. Notice the Add Data button on the right side of the screen. Click on the Add Data button. Once at the screen shown, select the sheet. Next, select the sheet containing the utilization rate data that you want to visualize. Four cells should be selected, the task description and their corresponding hours. Then click OK. The pie chart format automatically populates in the dashboard like shown. Click on the right side toolbar and start to change the settings to familiarize yourself with all the ways you can visualize the data. Then. To make it extra fancy, let's do one last step. Let's add the actual utilization rate percentage next to our pie chart and label it. On the right hand side of the screen, when the chart widget editor is collapsed, click on the plus sign to add another widget to this dashboard. Select metric widget, and then the screen populates with another empty box. Click on add data on the right in the metric widget toolbox. When prompted, select the same sheet that contains the utilization rate data and this time, only select the cell labeled 73.3%, go ahead and click OK. Typically, Smartsheets brings not only the data, but the column titles too. For this example, click on the cell labeled Hours and hit Delete. Finally, customize the box by using the editor on the right from the metric widget toolbar. And that's it. If you're a project manager, imagine this. Each employee can have their list of priorities or tasks in their own sheets. The data can populate the dashboard to see everyone's utilization rates based on the data populated by each employee in their own sheet throughout the day or throughout the week. If this video added value, please give it a thumbs up and drop a comment with your feedback. I'm massively appreciated. See you in the next video.